You're the God of wonders. Praise the Lord and welcome to the God of Wonders radio program. Today's message, God's Choice, God's Timing, Part 1 with Sister Kerba Stephen, as first heard at the New Haven Teen Challenge in Connecticut. Abraham and Lot had decisions to make, and based on those decisions, they either prospered spiritually or fell into snares. We trust that this study will help you to live a godly life. Let's listen. Genesis 13, Amen. 8 to 18. So Abraham said to Lot, Let's not have any quarreling between you and me. Now, who is Abraham and who is Lot? Abraham is a man, Lot is another man. But they're both relatives. When we read the next few verses, we're going to see they're both related. And they both have a lot of property. They're both traveling from one place to another. And Abraham has a lot of cattle. Lot has a lot of cattle. Abraham calls Lot, his relative, and he says, you know what? We are both related. Why do our people have fights between each other? Let's not have any more quarrel. So we're going to separate. If we are living at a little bit of, you know, distance, then we won't have trouble. You'll have enough room. I'll have enough room. So that's what we see. 8 to 18, I'm going to read it again. So Abraham said to Lot, Let's not have any quarreling between you and me, or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. Verse 9, It's not the whole land before you. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. And verse 10, Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zoar was well watered like the garden of the Lord like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company. Abraham lived in the land of Canaan where Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tents near Sodom. Now the people of the Sodom were very wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. But I want to stop here and just give you an overview over here of what was happening. They both parted ways, but Lot was given a choice. Abraham says, Lot, pick whatever you want to pick, whatever land. You see the whole place in front of you, choose one side. So Lot, he's just looking and he's saying, okay, I'm looking all over. And I think that that place over there looks really green, looks really wealthy. So I'm going to go over there. So he moves over there, and we see over here what place it is. It's not a good place. It's a bad place. You see, verse 13 says, Now the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. The Lord, the choice that Lot made, made them land in the company of sinners, where people were really bad, but on the outside it looked like really nice, really, really glamorous, comfortable. Whatever he thought, would make him feel comfortable. That place called Sodom and Gomorrah looked really nice. So he made the choice, he goes there. But on the contrary, what is Abraham doing? Now Abraham didn't move an inch. He's waiting. He stayed where he was. Now, we're going to read verse 14. The Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord had parted from him, look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the land, walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abraham waited. He waited until God would show him where he had to go. He didn't make a choice like Lot did. Did Lot consult God which direction he had to take? No. He just thought in his human mind, okay, this place looks good, so I'm going to go there. But Abraham didn't do that. Abraham just stayed where he was until God saw Lot make the choice. And, Ab- and the Lord came to Abraham and said, Abraham, you waited for me, right? You waited for me, so look what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you not just one portion. Walk to the north, to the south. He's saying, like, just look every way you look. I'm going to give that place to you. And God blessed Abraham, because he waited on God. So today morning, one thing that we are learning that's very important is waiting on God. We should know, before we are learning to wait on God, we should know, a lot of us would have made choices like how Lot did before. 
right? We saw certain things. Maybe we grew up with things that we didn't have. Or maybe we had, and we thought, oh, this looks better, like how Lot did. Lot made his choice based on what he saw until he really went there, right? He didn't know. But when he went there, what happened is what we're going to see next. Quickly, I'm going to run through the verses, and then we're going to speak like a couple of points what the Lord wants to address, because God knows each one of our hearts. And God's word is very, very apt. It can be the same passage, but it will speak to you, 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 exactly according to your situation. So we're going to um, read, continue reading from verse 18. So Abraham went to live near the great trees of Mamre and Hebron, and where he pitched his tents. There he built an altar to the Lord. So Abraham... He's doing what God showed him. You know, he's building, he's worshiping God. You don't see anything like that written about Lot. Lot was comfortable. You know, modern days we can say he got his money, he got his car, he got his house, he got whatever he wanted to get. And he's comfortable where he is. Abraham was not like that. Abraham was depending on God. He waited on God. When God gave something to him, a promise to him, immediately he said, Lord, I'm going to do it. And he built an altar and he worshiped God. Abraham was a worshiper of God. And so, I'm going to go to a couple of chapters after this, because we're going to see what happened actually with the choices they made. So let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 19. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons or daughter, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry of the Lord against his people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. Now, this is about the place where Lot is living. God sends his angels. The angel of the Lord is coming to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He says the outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah. That means a lot of complaining about Sodom. Sodom is like this. Sodom is so bad. Sodom is so bad. Sodom, they're murdering. They're doing this. They're doing that. All kinds of complaints going to the Lord. God is not an unjust God, right? He's not going to wipe out the good with the bad. So that's why he's telling Abraham, and Abraham asked him, few verses before that, God tells Abraham, I'm not going to wipe out the just with the unjust. But if there are only a few, what will God do? He will remove the few from that place and he'll wipe out that place. That's what God was doing here. Because Lot and the few people were there were too few in number. So he's not going to like, wait, okay, I'm going to spare all the unjust people because only a few are. And then what's going to happen? More injustice will happen, right? Multiplication of evil. So God said, even though I'm very loving, I'm all love, I'm a just God. So I have to show justice. And at this point, the angels, they come to, uh, to Lot and they say, we're going to destroy this place. Who are all in your family that will go with us? Tell them all to get up. So now, what Lot is doing, Lot is going to the men who are going to marry his daughters. He's saying, hey, this place is going to get destroyed. Get out. Come with me. This place is going to destroy it. Yeah, come with me. You know what they said? They said, huh, really? You go. I'm not coming. So now, they had a choice. The warning comes to them saying, get out. This place is going to burn. This place is going to get destroyed. They refused to believe what Lot said. This human being, right? This human being who came and gave the information. But they didn't listen to that. You hear that, right? Sometimes in news, certain places, they give that tornado warning. And some people want to be heroic and they stay there and the whole house, everything flies away. So, these two men did not listen to the warning that came from Lot to leave that place. So, they were left. Now, what did Lot do after that? These two people, they say, do you have anyone else here? Sons-in-law, sons or daughter, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you, get them out of here. Verse 13. Because we're going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against his people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. Verse 14. So Lot went out and spoke to his son, sons-in-law who had pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. Let's read 15. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged the Lord saying, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Or you will be swept away with the city 
but the city is punished. So he's saying, hurry, God has a timing. God is not going to let everything happen forever, right? He, had, he works according to his calendar. So he said, hurry, we have to go. We have to go. I'm here to rescue you. We have to go. And so he's hurrying. He's hurrying Lot and his daughters. When he said, hurry, verse 15, I'm going to read it again. With the coming of the dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. Lot hesitated. Verse 16. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and let them safely out of the city. The Lord was merciful to them. So this verse, you see, the grace of God. Really the grace of God, because Lot is like, the angel, is no, angel knows that fire and brimstone is going to be poured out. He's saying, come on, let's get out. And here Lot is like hesitating. Should I leave? You know, should I go? You know. But because of the mercy of God, God holds Lot's hand, his wife's hand, on the angels. They hold Lot's hand, wife's hand, and daughter's hand. Drags them literally out of the place. And he brings them out. Out of the city. For the Lord was merciful. 17. Let's read verse 17. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. So there's the next command coming. Now I have brought you, even though you didn't know what was really happening, I brought you out because of the mercy of God. Now what you have to do is run. Run. Don't look back. It was a very specific command. This was a specific command that was given. Saying, don't look back. Don't look back. Run. You have fire and that's going to come. Don't look back. Run for your life. And when God says don't look back, there's a specific reason, right? As to why we should not look back. Verse 18. But Lord said to them, No, my Lord, please. Now both the angels are telling, Flee for your lives. Don't look back. And don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. So he's giving a definite, specific location even where to run. He said, that is a good place, hiding spot. Run. Like they say, right? When you have tornado, go to the basement. So the angel is saying, go to that mountain because he knows what areas are going to be destroyed. And he's telling Lot specifically. But Lot says, no, my Lord, please. Your servants have found favor in your eyes and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But can't I flee? He's asking... But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. When he's telling this place is safe, what is Lot saying over here? Oh, I don't want to go to the mountain because I can get destroyed. So he's saying, look, here's a town near enough to run to and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. So the council is coming to me and he's saying something opposite, something contrary to what, like the escape route that was given to him. He's saying, no, no, no. I'll try this. When the fire is coming into a building and you have a fire escape route, what will you choose to get? Which route? Fire escape, right? You're not going to say, I'm not going to take the fire escape. I think if I go down there, it's going to be much longer, so I'm going to go right next to where the fire is coming. But this window is closed, so I'm going to go down. If we say that, what will happen? We can get burned because the fire can be much faster than you think. So when God tells us to do something, there's a very specific reason behind why he's telling you to do certain things. If he says, don't go there, that means he cares about us. He does not want us to fall. He does not want us to get hurt. Thank you for joining us, and we trust that you'll join us next time for part two of this message. Until then, if you'd like to write us, please write contact at elbim.org. Or you can visit us on the web, www lbethel international ministries dot org or www dot elbim dot org Praise the Lord and welcome to the God of Wonders radio program. God gives all of us chances to follow His will. May we make the right choice and stay in the place that God has ordained for us for the amount of time that He wants us to be there. Let's find how to follow God's will as we hear the second part and conclusion of the message 
first heard at the Teen Challenge in New Haven, Connecticut by Kerber Stephen on God's Choice, God's Timing. Let's listen. So when God tells us to do something, there's a very specific reason behind why he's telling you to do certain things. If he says don't go there, that means he cares about us. He does not want us to fall. He does not want us to get hurt. Now Lot, he thinks he knows much more than the godly counsel that is coming through the angel. And so he says, Lord, let me go, you know, to this closest town. But the angel of God, he's being merciful again. He's sparing that town because he's going over there. He said, okay, go. He said, flee there quickly because I cannot do until you reach there. And he spared the town. He said, I will not overthrow the town, you speak of. Flee there quickly. By the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah. From the Lord are the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, destroyed all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. She became a pillar of salt. Disobedience will always cost. Always cost. Anytime you disobey, it always costs. Cost it. Sometimes it can cost us everything. So we have to be very careful. When God tells us to do something, we do it. Do it wholeheartedly. And there's beautiful reward. Like look what happened to Abraham. Right? He didn't have to go through any of his headache. He lived in a place where God wanted him to be and his whole family was blessed. Now, Lot's family, he lost his wife. Gone. And he's going now with his two daughters. But even then, like he didn't have that sense to think, okay, God has sent these angels to rescue me. Why don't I just listen to him and go to that mountain? Why do I have to choose some other city again? Make the same mistake, but he did the mistake twice. So, in our lives, how does this apply? In our lives, a lot of times we have made bad choices. We have made choices like Lot did. We said, okay, this looks good, I'm going to go this way. But then what happens, God by His grace, He sends an angel. Like many times you can think like, how am I here in this place in Connecticut, King Charles, right? But we have to realize, in some human form, some way, God has sent an angel to bring you here to this place. To learn about God. It's a rescue, right? There's a rescue place where God said, I'm going to rescue you. And some of us, when somebody would have told us, we would have said, no, I don't want to go there, right? I don't want to go there. Just like Lot said, we have hesitated before. But because God, in His mercy, He caught your hands and He brought you here. And God has put you in this place. That's the mercy of God. When we didn't deserve we made a wrong choice, when we chose our own path and went to a place where we shouldn't have gone. And we got comfortable until we knew we were going to be completely destroyed. And God gives a wake up call. He says, you are going to be destroyed. Get out of where you are. Get out of where you're sitting. And God sends an angel. You know, the angel might have not been like white and dressed with, you know, thing with him, wing or whatever. No. Some means God came to you. He sent you somebody like an angel to say, go to this place. Get your refuge here. Away from destruction. Because Satan wanted to destroy your life completely. Make you do nothing. But God, in his mercy, in his grace, he said, I'm sending an angel. God didn't have to do that, right? When you think about it. Does God have to do that? Is He always anything? No. Whatever was looming on us is the wrath of God. But God said, I love you. And I have favor on you. And I have grace. The abundant grace of God. God said, I'm going to hold you by my hand. I don't think this place is like really good. You know, I've heard like negative things about it. I don't think. Maybe I went to some other place. It didn't do any. I don't think this is going to do any good. All kinds of things you could have had in your heart. All kinds of thoughts you could have had in your heart. You know what? Just like God did for Lot. There was somebody in your life, God used instrument, but dragged you by your hands. You have to go. God used that in your life. God used that in your life and God brought you here. That's the law of God. What God wants to speak to you today is, the place where God brings you here, stay. A lot of times we can say, Lord, you're telling me to escape from here. And you're telling me to go to a mountain. I don't know how that mountain is going to be. I'll just stay right here. For six months in the program, one year, Lord, three months. I feel I have recovered enough. 
I think I can be on my own. Six months is too long. And I feel very lonely. And I want to get out. Remember that. That will be a snare for you. It's not going to be a blessing for you. Because the place that God has for you is your protection. It's a protection to strengthen you. You know how you have um, a chicken? When they, when they lay the eggs, they incubate it for 21 days. 21 days, the chicken has to sit on the egg. Every egg will sit on it. You will see it sitting. Day number two, day number three, day number four. We did that in our school. And, um, you know, for the kids in our school, we had the incubator and we had the eggs. And we did the same thing. Incubator is an artificial thing, right? But same thing that happens, it needs that kind of a temperature. You know, it really needs that environment. Even one day you take the egg out of that temperature. You say, okay, it has been 20 days. So, that's enough. 21st day doesn't need to be in this temperature. I won't take it out. That will die. Do you know that? 21 days it has to be under the incubation. That's the incubation period. When the 21 days the chick baby chick is in the egg and you let it stay there for that full period, maturation period, what happens is after the 21 days we see like little beak poking coming out of the shell and the chick comes out and then it's able to survive on its own. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you today, God says, I have a period, a definite time period in your life where God has a calendar for you. He says, I have you in this program for some time. And I want to really mature you. I really want to strengthen your core inside. Sometimes psychologically we can feel like, okay, I can do it, I can handle it. But you know what? God sees your inner man. He knows how much you can handle. He, he knows what will happen if you leave early. He knows what will happen to you if you don't really grow in the Lord. You'll be like the egg that's not fully incubate. So your time that God has for you in this program is tech. That's one godly counsel that God wants to give you today. So the first thing that we saw, in spite of the choices that we made, just like Lot, went to Sodom, did our own thing. God sent an angel in your life to rescue you from there, bring you, you know what, to the mountain. God wants to put you in a mountain top. God is a glorious future. You know when God created you, when God made you as a little tiny baby, you know, and God put you in your mother's womb, God had a very definite plan, very unique plan. There's no two Johns. You can have like John and you can even have John J, you know, or John B, you know, whatever you can have. Um, the same last name. You can have 10 people with the same last name. Doesn't matter. But each person is very unique. There are no two, really two John B's before God. They are very, very unique. God designed you in a very unique way for a unique purpose. What we do is many times we lose focus. We lose focus. And you know how we are? We are like the little kids. You take little, I don't know how many of you um, have seen like little three-year-old kids, right? You take, line up all three-year-old kids. Say you have like ten, three-year-old, three and four-year-old preschool kids. You line them up and you put them... Track one, track two, track three, track four. Like I have ten kids say, lined up. You have ten tracks. You're gonna tell them, you're gonna stand here, you're gonna stand here, you make them all stand. And then you're gonna say, I'm gonna say, ready, step, go. When I say that you're all gonna run and you all have to run in your tracks. Do you think they're all running their tracks? Do you think so? No. The moment you say ready, set, go, they'll all be going in a different direction. And if they see their mommy standing there, or somebody, you know, standing there, they'll forget about the track and they'll run right to that. We were all like that. We grew up, when we did different things, we were all like that. God had a track for us, with a crown at the end, with a very specific purpose, with a specific plan. Stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, stage five, stage six, God had a very specific plan. But what happened is we, like little children, Saw something glittering here, saw something glittering there, saw something glittering in the track, running. Oh, I want to go there. Candy, I want to go there. Oh, that looks like gold, I want to go there. 
to each place where we shouldn't have gone, we went. Right? Am I right? Ran to different places where we shouldn't have gone. Just like Lot did. The choices that we make are very important. But the grace of God comes there. That's what we see in Lot. Even though he made the choice of going to Sodom, and he got very comfortable, he sat there, right? He started his business there, he had his family there, and everything. He even wanted to get his daughters married. Obviously, those are people from there. When he told about the coming wrath, what did they do? They just laughed, right? And they didn't go. So they were left. But the mercy of God took the ones who God knew had to bring them out. And these people, they at least came, right? His daughter, his wife, they came. But the second thing what the Lord says is, I sent you, right? I said, yeah, the reason why I'm saying it three, four times is want to really get it straight into your spirit, into your heart. When we went to the wrong places like Lot did, whatever it is, God sent an angel in your life to bring you from there to put you in this program. Like Lot, some of us, like I said, we read, we said, we hesitated. The mercy of God drew you and put you in here. Right? That's number two. Number three, what the Holy Spirit says is, where I'm putting you, go straight, don't look back. Don't look back. That was instruction given by the angel to who? To Lot, Lot's wife, and the two daughters. Right? Then we read that? Yeah. All, how many? One, two, three, four of them received the same instruction. One, though came, though was caught by the hand and delivered out of that place and brought up to a certain distance, chose to turn back because our heart was there. We cannot be like that, right? We cannot be where God brought you here in the program and having a heart over there saying, what? Oh, two months, three months, I want to go, I want to go back. Maybe if I go back, I'll feel better. You won't feel better. You know why? God rescued you from the wrath. God rescued you from destruction, brought you here. With a glorious plan. The very glorious plan God brought you here. So, the next thing the Lord is telling you is, don't look back. I brought you from disaster. I brought you from disaster. Don't look back. There's nothing good over there. Right? There's nothing good over there. God took you from there. He brought you. Rescued you by His mercy. Even though you resisted, God brought you here. So, stay in this program. God specifically spoke to me this morning. So I don't know what you're going through, what's in your mind, what your thoughts are. But this is what the word says, stay in the program. Don't look back like what Lot's wife did. Don't look back. Because the moment you look back and think, okay, I'm doing fine. I don't think I have to completely go through the program. I don't think I need to stay God. Because staying with God's people is very important. I don't think I need to stay with God's people. You know, I'm strong enough. I can go maybe evangelize. I, I know I'm born again. You know, I have the strength. I want to go back. It, if you just continue and leave, what happened to the last week can happen to us. She lost her life. Basically, she's gone, right? If she becomes a pillar of salt, what's the use? Her life is gone, right? Her whole life is gone. Dear listening friend, although the message was directed primarily toward those in the recovery work at Teen Challenge in the Bible program, we trust that the Lord has spoken to you. May we always be in the place where the Lord wants us to be. Not our will, but His will be done and thus secure blessings for eternity. To write us, please write contact at elbim.org or you can visit us on the web www.elbim.org